Let's go over to our man, Mr. Teddy Kegstad, as we do every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day, folks, at Forex dash trading dash unlock dot com that's forex dash trading dash unlock dot com then in case that you riding that hey, way hey how are you guys i'm doing great man yourself you know i'm doing pretty good it's uh kind of a quiet day in the currencies today not like well since we talked last it was uh quite the volatile period for sure oh there's no doubt man i mean how about that move in the euro huh Oh my gosh, that was the biggest move that we've seen in the euro, uh, you know, for like a week and a half. Just the, the volatility that happened intraday, let alone the full moves uh, that it yes. yielded. So, so what do you think, like, when you're looking at this euro right now? I mean, is this thing game? That's a 115, you know, 118, or what are you thinking? Well, you know what? I mean, where the, the, the recent low is, that's been a very strong support area for the euro for a long time. Yeah. Um, now, what really surprised me was the, the Volcker-esque way of cutting interest rates yesterday. Okay. You know? Yeah. So now the market, I think, is pretty much factored in the coronavirus, you know, or is at least as far as the currencies, I think. Okay. I think the equity markets still have a little bit more to go as far as like the S&Ps and stuff like that, especially with the way the volatility looked yesterday. Yes. So but like I look at the yen, you know, for instance, like this market was in a very strong bull market for a very long time. And now, especially with what's going on and even with this interest rate cut, I don't understand how the, the yen isn't uh, is, isn't bouncing right now, you know, so right. I, it's it's very odd. To, you know, that we, last week we talked about how there was a divergence and we were starting to see that these uh, counter trend mer uh, moves were either going to follow through even more like they did or we start to see a little bit of a turn, which we didn't get. And now I think we're starting to come into that little area where the dollar the dollar weakness. I mean, you know, I'm a dollar bear right now over the long term. Yes. But I, I think that dollar strength is still going to start to uh, rear its head again over the next two weeks. Yeah, it's it, the. I mean, this is a big failure on the yen. There's no doubt. I mean, you know, I mean right. that that spike. We we were at 112, you know, not too long ago, man. I mean, it's like okay, this thing looks like it's charging down to this uh, 104 level. I mean, we're at right. 107 you, right now. You you remember when we talked last week? It was only halfway from where it is now, from the low to the high. Yes. Or the most recent high. And we were, we were talking about how if it does go, like, I didn't think it was going to get as low as it did, but now it's made, it's confirmed lower move lows. So the long-term bull trend is definitely on a neutral call right now. And as far as, like, I mean, you you, you watch the gold market, and you've seen what it's done over the last few days, especially, <laughs> you know. And, I mean, oh and uh, especially with the way the equity markets are rocking. Uh, like I said, the yen, it doesn't seem to be acting like it normally would be, you know, and especially yes. in, the, in the wake of the central bank act. Action. You know, it's it's really hard to to put a beat on this one. You know, the other currency, you look at the Turkish lira, you had a nice little sell signal that came in. They had a nice little corrective move. You got the Canadian U.S. dollar, Canadian dollar. It looks like they're trying to have a little bit of a corrective move. So there's some weakness and strength that's starting to show versus the, the fundamental trade that we've seen going on for the past couple of weeks. But the U.S. dollar yen is a total puzzler. I, I can't put a grip on it. I think that if you're an aggressive bear or bull, you got to just use the today's low as your risk. Anything below it, I think you're going to grind, keep on grinding, you know. <laughs> you know, it's so interesting what you're we saying there. And we were talking about this a few weeks ago, Teddy, uh, you, I, and Tommy. And mm -hmm. what it was is that that was the first time that the yen, even when it was weaker, meaning higher in price, right? right. The gold market didn't react. And remember, I, I said, I, you know, it was like, oh yes. man, this is so strange, man, because what happens, folks, is that the yen almost runs the gold market. I mean, it's that dramatic, okay? And maybe that was one of the tales, do you know what I mean? That's like, okay, man, th sure. this is like crazy, man, okay? Because we were, we were right up there. Normally, folks, what that would happen. You know, and, and then, and I guess I can make the case, okay, it was a delayed action because they whacked gold 100 bucks on Friday, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, man. Oh, you got to love it, though. I'll tell you. Well, you know, it's kind of funny, like, you're, you're drawing the correlation with, which we, we both know how gold and yen are very interrelated. Yes. And I'm starting to think, too, is that it could be, you know, oil has taken quite the little, nice little sell-off over the past couple weeks and now is in a very nice area so let's say that even with all the supply chain slowdowns and whatever what have you if production is slowing and even if if sales are slowing but your costs are also diminishing at the same time 
what is the severity of the whole situation? You know what I mean? Right. right. So and I think that with the yen, you might be seeing the yen strength because if when oil is low, it's good for Japan because they don't have oil to begin with. They have to import it no matter what. Sure. You know, so and uh, especially, you know, if the corona stuff starts to really stabilize now over the next couple of weeks, you know, the numbers are, it's kind of weird. In certain places, it seems like they're stabilizing. In other places, they're not, you know. So we don't know what that impact is yet. But I think maybe for the Asian trade, the yen might start to be, a, a, maybe it's a bull right now. I don't know. I it's, it's a really hard thing to gauge, especially with how gold's moving, you know. Yeah, there's no doubt. One of, you know, we just had those oil numbers. And one of our tigers in the den brought up a great point. And what it was, folks, is that, that yeah, the, the airlines are getting killed. You know, there's no doubt. But more people will probably jump in their car using gasoline. And it's right. so wild because last night I'm talking to one of my cousins and, you know, he's going to get another one of my cousins. He says, what? You know, they're going to jump in their car and they're riding down here. They says, what? we're coming, man. <laughs> and it's, so, it's just so funny. And But they're jumping in their car. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. So we, that's, that's a phenomenon that you, you, we do want to pay attention to, folks. And, you know, sure. you don't, you, millions of people jump in their cars, start using oil. Maybe, you know, oil can basically get stabilized here. You know, it's going right. you know, to be interesting, man. There's no well, doubt. Well, especially with the holidays coming up, you know, you got spring breaks and stuff oh. like that. It will be interesting to see how that, those numbers start to uh, pan out. Yeah, spring break. I forgot about so, that. Spring break. But with, the, with, with, the, yep. with you know, with the European currencies, you know, it's pretty interesting how you know the dollar has been in a little bit of a retreat recently. The pound still just seems to be a sideways kind of grinding little bear, kind yep. of not really, but it just doesn't seem to want to get a rally. But it doesn't want to sell off either. You know, like when when the euro was really stretching this these this uh, through resistance over the past few sessions before today. When you look at the pound, which is also one of the biggest currencies out there, it, there was really not very much volatility in the pound at all. Right. You know. Right. So, and the Swiss strength also kind of shows me that that the strength in the Swiss is returning. You know. So I think we're going to see a divergence. You know. But like I said, I think so we had found good support in the euro U.S. dollar. Whether it can maintain any type of rally, you know, like that's significant. I don't think so, but I think the volatility we have now, if that stays, well, that changes things, you know? I mean, we saw more, you guys have been trading for a long time. I mean, the currencies in, on th Thursday and Friday, especially Friday afternoon, the last few hours, it was trading like the S&Ps in a fast market. It was crazy with the range and how fast it was moving, right. you know? Yeah, going into these weekends, for currencies, right, for, for gold is, is always dangerous, man, you know, because right. the, the market is looking like two days, folks, and 48 hours in this market here, but might as well be like five weeks. <laughs> it's like sure. crazy. Sure. And here's another thing, too. We're, we are going to be coming into earnings season soon, and the, these earnings aren't going to be reflective of this virus until six months from now. The earnings for the, I mean, right now, all the yes. economic numbers are coming out great. No doubt. You know? Folks, you can reach Teddy every trading day, forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy, you have a great one, safe one. We look forward to speaking to next Wednesday. Absolutely, guys. Thanks cool. a lot. We'll see you next Thank week. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back.